So Man United, Chelsea ending there nil-nil. And what can we say about that game? Let me know what your reaction is in the comments below. I wouldn't say it's a massively frustrating result, but I think it's a sort of real indicator of where Manchester United are at the moment. Because if you look at our games against Liverpool this season, if you look at our games against City this season, and now Chelsea this season, very similar in, in, in the result and very similar in how the game has gone. That was not a nil-nil there today but you sort of that we've seen under Louis van Gaal, for example. For years, for those two years we had under van Gaal, we had so many dour nil-nil draws. That today there, there was really attacking intent from both Chelsea and United. It was actually, it was a decently entertaining nil-nil, but the, the final quality wasn't there. And I think the thing that summed it up was those two attacks at the end there. Reese James swinging across in, no one attacking it for Chelsea. United going on the counter-attack with Scott McTominay and... His final ball was poor. The final ball from both teams today was poor. The pressing from United was very good. One thing I would would say about United there today is that we didn't go there with the intention of stopping City, sorry, not City, of stopping Chelsea playing. We went there to play our own way and we played it. We pressed high. We squeezed the space. Maguire and Lindelof were staying very high up the pitch, a little bit dangerous given that Chelsea could have gone in behind, but instead of being worried about that, we were more interested in pressing higher to help our game. And and that in itself is a good part of the mentality switch that United have to do. But United, these sorts of games over the last few years, if you draw against your Chelsea, your Liverpool, your City, you know Spurs, you come away from those games thinking, yeah, okay, it's a decent result. And then you focus on beating your West Brom and Sheffield United and Norwich. But that's the mentality that United have to switch to get away from that and thinking, no, we have to go to Chelsea, go to City, go to Liverpool. And we want three points because we want to be champions. We want to win the Premier League. And that's the, that's the transition that United are going through at the moment that we haven't quite cracked yet. But I do think, as I said, that the fact that we are going to these teams now and instead of sitting up to stop them playing we're sitting up to try and play ourselves that's a step in the right direction starting 11 wise you know you can argue about a starting 11 if you want but there really is not much point because even if you pick players that are in form or out of form that something always goes wrong with the starting 11 it really does even if you think you've got the best starting 11 possible something will go wrong and that's just the way it goes but to see McTominay back in the team I'm not surprised that he played there I thought he played well there he had a couple of chances. Fred had a couple of chances. Our chances came more from deep than they did from our attackers. And I suppose when you haven't got Cavani in your team as your proper number nine, maybe that's something you're going to miss. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But I think the only real talking, like proper talking point from the first half was the, the penalty, which on paper looks like a stonewall penalty. Hudson Adoy's hand is naturally up there. Hits his hand first. Penalty. If you take it into interpretation past that point, it probably wasn't a penalty because Greenwood had his arm up, Hudson Doy had his arm up. But as far as the rules go, that was a penalty. But it wasn't given. Uh, and ultimately, there weren't, across the whole 90 minutes, there weren't any huge guilt edge chances from either team. I think. De Gea, I remember De Gea making a good save and then Shaw coming up in the first half. But overall, it, it wasn't a game that either team really felt they deserved to win. But if you're certainly going into that last 10 minutes, it reaches the point in the game there where you're looking at Chelsea and United, two teams I would say that at the moment have a similar mentality of coming away from these games with a point. That's good enough. That's good enough. We can build on that. And especially considering it's the start of uh, Tuchel's reign and I think Chelsea is still undefeated under him, at least in the Premier League. So they've, they've started well there. But United, there today, we didn't have the quality in the final third. And if you take Bruno Fernandes out of that team, Sod knows what that team would look like. And I still feel that's a bit like what United are at the moment. Uh, we're, we're still not a complete team. You look at Manchester United when Bruno Fernandes has a wonderful day, United have a wonderful performance. If, if Bruno play, he blows cold, United invariably blow cold. And that's what it is. You take Kevin De Bruyne out of City, you have taken Kevin De Bruyne out of City, even this season, and they're still flying. Uh, you take Salah out of Liverpool, for example, they've still got enough quality all around the pitch 
to cope without him. But United at the moment, unless Bruno Fernandes really is on form and singing, United really don't have that sort of quality in the final third. And that has to change. That has to come with everybody else improving around themselves. That Daniel James keeping his spot in the, in the team. I think, as, as Gary Neville said, it was at a half time, I think he said it. Daniel James will never be a week in, week out starter for Manchester United in that team. But as a sort of second choice winger, I think he adds a lot and he can add a lot. And I still don't think overall that James, Daniel James, sorry, is of the quality that United need. But we've got more pressing problems in different positions to think about moving him on and replacing him. But overall... It's the second nil-nil. I think the Real Sociedad game was the last game. I don't remember anymore. But a couple of nil-nils in a row, you've got to look at that as a negative. I suppose you can. But in terms of the Real Sociedad, we were 4 nil up from the first leg. We didn't have to do anything in the second leg. That was just a professional performance. There today against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, a ground that's sort of become our own under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer against Chelsea. I think both managers will be content with that nil-nil. Neither manager will be happy. I don't think... Either team really had the chance to win the game. And for United, it's sort of an indicator of the mentality block that we're at. Look, if, if, if a writer can reach a block when they're writing a script or a marathon runner can reach a block when they're running a marathon, I think United are at that point now. We're hitting the wall against these bigger teams. This mentality hurdle that we have to smash down and get through it and go into these games with our chests puffed out saying that we're United and we're going to go and win this game, rather than coming, going into the game thinking, we come away from a draw, I'll be happy with that. Ultimately, I'm happy enough with that draw today. As I said, I'm more content than happy. But that's the, the thing that United had to switch. And we've got City next week. So let's see what happens next week. But if we go into that in the same in that game, sorry, in the same style we went into today's game, hell no, we're not coming away from that game with 0-0. Not the way that City are playing. But who's your man of the match? What's your reaction to the game? Let me know in the comments below. As always, and make sure, of course, you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. Until next time, until City next weekend, and obviously the videos during the week, take it easy.